What's up, everybody? It's Mike Garcia with Biodynamic Athletics. And today we have a very special guest. We have Ms. Diana Hernandez and Zayda Velas, who are uh, faculty and program chairs of the STC PTA program. And we want to welcome you guys to the BDA good podcast. Good morning, everyone. So, good morning, right? It's, it's 10 a.m. And we're up nice and early and That's caffeinated. Right. Oh, we are Try. very caffeinated. <laughs> and ready to go. So um, let's just get into it, man. So let's just introduce, I know I, I did a little introduction there, but you guys maybe just introduce yourself a little bit for everybody. And if you want to give a little bit of what you do, you know, a little background and, you know, just kind of, just kind of let everybody know. Whoever okay. wants to go first. Go? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So my name again is Saida Ruelas. I'm one of the instructors at the PTA program here at South Texas College. Um, and I've been a clinician for about 20 years, almost at this point, in one more year, so 19 nice. and counting. Mm -hmm. um, but I mostly do pediatrics in the clinic. Um, it was one of those things I was 100% sure I was going to be the physical therapist for Tim Duncan. Right. And orthopedics <laughs> was my gig. And then I went to PT school and realized there were so many more outlets out there for a physical therapist. And then my last clinical rotation... I did do pediatrics, which I didn't want to do, mm -hmm. ended up loving it and never looked back. That's awesome. And that's a lot of patients for pediatrics, yeah. like I, I can tell you. And we'll get into it later, but I remember during school and I have a pediatric <laughs> story that I can share. Uh, Diana, go ahead. And I'm Diana Hernandez. I have been a physical therapist yeah. since 1989. There you go. Um, <laughs> and it was the opposite. I got into physical therapy wanting to do pediatrics <laughs> until I did pediatrics <laughs> as a student. <laughs> Uh, and that happens I, sometimes. Yeah, and then I realized that's probably not something I was going to be real good at right. uh, for eight hours a day. Right. So I went uh, towards the orthopedic population, and nice. that's really the majority of my practice. I did a little bit of everything because back in my day, um, PTs were much more generalist in nature. And so I did home health, um, uh, hospital, acute care, ICU, nursing home. But I ended up spending the majority of my years in uh, an outpatient setting where we did orthopedics. That's awesome. Uh, and then in 1997, I went to a birthday party and met uh, Dr. Metke, who worked for South Texas College at the time, and we got to talking. And I ended up getting hired later on that year to start the PTA program. That's awesome. So there's a lot of history in the PTA program, mm -hmm. right? And I she is the PTA program. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Zyla. So let's go there, okay? Because mm -hmm. Uh, you're known through the community at STC. You're known through the PTA community of graduates, right? And as Mrs. H, right? So Mrs. Hernandez, and um, this is important. And I want everyone to kind of know that this is the infinite, infamous Mrs. H, right? This is her, right? In the flesh, and we're here. And, you know, I, I kind of want to talk about um, that role. So when you, know, you, so you get approached, it comes into this part, that here we are for that PTA program. Uh -huh. um, what was the idea? What was the first thing you thought? Were you, were you well, scared? Was it an endeavor that maybe you I didn't want to take on? Is it something maybe I was that... naive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I had been working in Harlingen uh, at Valley Baptist mm -hmm. and for many years had been the coordinator of education for um, the rehab department. So I worked with physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy, and all the universities and colleges for placement and training of students. So my heart was in the student realm already, mm -hmm. and I had firsthand experience of the shortage that we were experiencing uh, of clinicians. Uh, for some time, you, the Pan American at the time had a PTA program. I'm not exactly sure how many years it was running. I didn't know that PTA. Yeah, I didn't know that PTA either. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Well. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, this okay. was uh, back in the 90s. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, UTRGV used to be called yes. Pan American. Yep. For any of the younger UTP. right cats out there, <laughs> so that was this was. I didn't know that. So I didn't know yeah. they had a PTA program. And so we had hired a number of their graduates, but then they closed, and so our our stream of of potential candidates kind of dried up. Right. And uh, as a department, we were really struggling as were most departments. Right. So uh, I, I was aware of the shortage. I started kind of talking with Dr. Metke about mm -hmm. that that evening. And when he mentioned, we're, ta you know, we're talking about st starting a PTA program, I was very excited and said, you know, let me know what I can do to help. I definitely want to work with your students, send them to us. We'll get them placed, right. we'll get them trained. Um, hmm. And then within an hour, it was, would you like to run the program? Wow. <laughs> so. Do you want a job? <laughs> so like. that kind of was, a, I was not expecting okay. that. 
Uh, it took a few months of conversation, you know, with my husband, and, mm -hmm. and it was not anything that I really had formally considered doing. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with a number of individuals that eventually became my mentors. Uh, S.B. Bratton was running the OTA program at the time. Wanda Spratt was the division dean. Right. Um, I had a chance to meet with Dr. Um, Dr. Reed, Dr. who was Reed. the college president at the time. Yeah. So I was very fortunate, and the college was real small at the time. Um, and went to a couple of meetings statewide and kind of got the feel for what it was what the environment looked like right. and thought, okay. So, mm -hmm. let, let, okay. <laughs> so let me ask up to that point, um, how involved were you or was there an interest in education? Had you done anything in education prior to that, like through college or like substituting or Not anything like that? since I had been a little girl in second grade <laughs> and they asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> wow. And I didn't want to be a nurse. Okay. And I didn't want to be a police officer and right. there was very few options. So I picked the cutout that was the teacher. Wow. <laughs> wow. And really that had been it. And oh I God. had, I had considered it when I was looking at majors back in my day going to college. Wow. I had looked at education, but then physical therapy came across my radar and I fell in love. Wow. Um, and I never looked back. You know, I, I went straight in, went to Texas Women's University, got my degree and, and was doing my thing. Wow. Um, and this was just one of those times in your life when something falls in front of you as an right. opportunity and you think, uh, should I? Should right. I not? Yeah. Um, so originally my plan was to do the startup for them. Right. And I hired on as their startup person. And I said, I'll, I'll get the you know, uh, state approval. I'll get the national accreditation. I'll get your first cohort going. Right. And then I'll probably step back out. Right. So I, I originally planned on five years. So fast forward 20, 26 years. 26 years <laughs> and we're still, still talking we're still about still it. Trucking. Still yeah. kicking. That's because awesome. Because it got to the point where it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Right. But uh, I, I love it. Yeah. You know, because every year is a chance to do it better. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so as I had to tell me, right, so you talked a little about orthopedics. That was kind of out of right, school. Right, that was my initial interest. Um, I wanted to work with the Spurs organization. Yeah. I loved Tim Duncan. You know, Who all does that it? basketball Who does was... It? <laughs> was everything. I went to as many games as I could. I My undergrad was at UTSA. So I was actually there when Tim Duncan was being recruited and toured on campus. Nice. I was the person on the water fountain right with Tim Duncan right behind me. Dude, that's awesome. That's, yeah, it's one of my favorite nice. stories to tell. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, I mean, you know, long story short, Tim Duncan was, you know, he signed on with the Spurs and, you know, made history. Uh -huh. um, was there at the 99 championship nice. when they won. So that go. was, yeah, that was really cool. So did you, did you have any education background as well? I know your, your husband also is an educator, right? Yeah, so he's, at were, U right. he's at UTRGV. Mm -hmm. He's with the OTD program. Okay. Yeah. So did you have any prior experience of education too coming into this or what was, what was the spike? <laughs> you know, what was the spark, you, you know, know, that got you? I, I, when I was in PT school, you get to do your clinical rotations yeah. based on what courses you've taken that mm -hmm. semester. And so the last couple of rotations, if you've met all your clinical skills, you kind of get a little bit more play in what you get to do. One of the rotations that I chose to do was at St. Philip's College with the PTA program. Oh, nice. So I did one rotation and I realized how challenging it was to teach uh, students in the PTA program because there's so many psychomotor skills they have to learn. Right. You're responsible for so much. 80% of what a PTA does is hands-on. Right. So it's really important. And I, you know, I was very interesting to me. I loved the clinical rotation doing that. But then after that, I was still kind of set on orthopedics. Right. But then after, you know, after doing my pediatric rotation, I started doing peds. And then after 10 years of doing pediatrics, uh, mostly with Milestones Therapeutic Associates, which right. is not far mm -hmm. from here. Um, I just, I, I got the bug. I got the bug that I wanted to challenge myself. I didn't want to turn into a complacent therapist. I knew that I wanted to keep learning and maybe try something else. I did some home health. I did a couple of different things in um, the different areas of physical therapy. And then my husband actually was asked by one of his former instructors to help out with the OT program. Nice. So he picked up the pediatrics course. So of course I was like, hey, PT collaboration. That's right. <laughs> so I went one of his one of the semesters that he was teaching the pediatrics course and I put, you know, just kind of gave him the point of view of the physical therapist and how the OT and PT can work together. Mm -hmm. And then I just walked into the NAH campus. <laughs> I knocked on Diana's door and I was like, do you have a need for an instructor in any way? Awesome. 
And and it and was here we are. perfect timing. Well, you know, I, I remember, I, I don't, in our class, you started in 2016. I'm just going to throw well, it out there. 2014, I started okay. doing intro to physical therapy okay. courses oh, as an adjunct. Okay. But you guys were actually the very first class that right. I taught as a full-time faculty. As a full-time faculty, yeah. right? Because I remember that, that being that, that yeah. first year. I, you didn't allow, do it lab assistant right it was just the intro no, course. I just okay went straight into right. teaching well yeah so i remember that so you know that it was flawless it was a great class it was a great class so it was, a it was good it was it was flawless man it was i mean good. i think that you definitely like diana yeah. said you keep trying to be better yeah. and hopefully you get better every time but i'm glad i wasn't that bad no it was good um let me ask you so you know I, there's a lot of challenges with no education than going into this field and Lots obvious i mean as pts you guys have the education and what do you think has been the biggest challenge for you, I'd ask you first, what do you think is the biggest challenge when it comes to teaching? So I, I think you kind of hit on the head when you said psychomotor mm -hmm. skills, that's a big deal, right? Because there's yeah. global thinking and there's kind of analytic book stuff, right. but then it's applying it to the yeah, real because world, right? I think the hardest thing is being able to adapt to different types of learners. Right. Some students are, well, the majority of PT, PTA students are going to be very kinesthetic learners. Right. They got to put their hands on things, they got to put their hands on other students so right. that they can learn things. But it's that other, it's that other intrinsic learning factor. Right. How do you learn the didactic information? Right. And I think being able to change the way that you deliver information and content is going to be one of the hardest things. Because I, you know, I grew up in an era where lecture was it. Yeah. That's all you had: oh, lecture, yeah. lecture, For lecture. Sure. And so I did definitely start off as an instructor that did a lot of lecturing, and then slowly over the years, as we've seen the student that comes into the PTA program change, we've had to adapt into more of, okay, smaller amounts of lecture, right. more active learning, more, you know, tell me what you learned, what do, what do you need to know more about, um, show me this or show me that, versus just kind of lecturing at a student. And I think that Diana is very cognizant about that. Every year she tweaks just, you know, something awesome. gets tweaked, something gets changed, right. something gets turned a little bit different because it's that different student that comes in that we have to keep tweaking for. Right. And more and more, we're seeing the student needs a different type of teacher, different type of instructor. Right. Nice. So, Dana, what do you think? What has been I, the challenging part? We yeah. conversation about this with our faculty <laughs> department meeting. Um, I think, you know, Saida definitely, she's right that, that how to how to get that student and, and connect with them and right. get them to learn and learn quickly because yeah. we're going to run through the content yes, so fast. Yes, we do. You know how that yeah. goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, what I have found most challenging is classroom management mm. because we have the clinician skills. Right. You know, we know we're, we're effective at what we do right. and we can teach a psychomotor piece. But how do you control a classroom, how do you motivate students, how do you keep them engaged, mm -hmm. um, how do you diffuse behaviors right. that maybe aren't uh, as professional as you'd like them to be, right. or redirect an adult, you know, because mm -hmm. we're teaching adult learners, True that. so you yeah. have to be very respectful of the mm -hmm. fact that they come with their own history and background, um, and so that to me has always been the greatest challenge, and I think that that's probably where... Yeah. Um, that's definitely I, that. Yeah. A big problem too. And I think that's yeah. where I now feel like I'm able to mentor because um, it the only way to get there is with experience. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can say, you know, being an alumni of the program, you know, going in, it can be, I don't know, for lack of better terms, we'll say tedious or the process, right, to get in there. And, and oh, I talk we agree. to, yeah, and I talk, <laughs> no, but you know, I really feel like that's uh, deliberate. Yes. Right. It really has to be because at this point it's kind of like a sifter. Right. We're kind of just kind of sifting because yeah. so you got to have the volunteer hours and you know, there's an entire process to it. And I've talked to a lot of people who were interested in the program and or as a PTA. Oh, man, I want to do that. But I had to do ABC one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And that's just too much. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time and blah, blah, blah. And my right. family and, you know, and, and yeah, it's legitimate, challenging. legitimate reasons. Yeah, it, it's a challenging. Um, but have you ever gotten. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know if it's feedback or maybe like a stronger, someone with a stronger uh, opinion about that, like with the efforts of the class. I can tell you, like I've talked to some grads who graduated, let's say from Del Mar or other colleges, where they're not in the classroom I know. seven days a week, right? right? And I always say, well, do they have 100%? Yeah. Testing yeah, rate, I right? Do these schools, so I mean, what do you guys think? Have you, I mean, I'm sure yeah. you've run across this with 
you know, either students or former students or maybe people who didn't get into the program. Yeah. Uh, how many programs are there in Texas? Do you, do you know? That's a, uh, uh, yeah, like 15? Uh, yeah, I think we might be up to 17 or 19. I'm okay. not, yeah. We should know yeah. that. Right. Every year there's, every year there's at least two more. programs that potentially get yeah. accredited. Oh, okay. And we're, you know, we all kind of do things a little bit differently. Um, but who I mean, is the best in the state? Oh, yeah. Right? We can't, can't say that. that. <laughs> no, we, we can't. can't. Say we can't. That. Oh, okay, no, well, we can, say we can let other outcomes. people say that. <laughs> yeah, and our outcomes, right, are you know, some of speak the speak for themselves, right? Yeah. Speak for themselves. Um, but you know, it kind of all. We really focus on excellence. That's mm -hmm. our driving, our driving factor. There right. is what do we need to do to create excellent clinicians? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so everything is by design. Right including the rigor even to just apply and get in right because again if if, the process. if that is too rigorous then yeah. chances are this is not a good match for you right you know there is probably a better match for right. your interests your um availability your level of commitment mm -hmm. yeah. but we know what it takes and so it starts right after advising right yeah, yeah it does and that's that's a Great answer, man. I think that's very true. And I think that lies true. And I think talking to the graduates, people through the program, yeah. it is what it takes. It, it is a big commitment. Yeah. We're right. going and into the, the medical the, field. The more difficult something mm -hmm. is, the more that you value it right. whenever it comes mm -hmm. right. to you. Absolutely. And I think that that is, I can tell you without you know a shadow of a doubt that passing everything in PT school, like getting through PT school was the most challenging thing I had ever done right. up to that point. And when I finally graduated, when I walked that stage, I knew I had worked my butt off for right. that. Yeah. And so nobody can take that away from you. Yeah. When it's too easy, you don't value it. Right. And so if you graduate from the PTA program, right. you value that. And 100%. you know you worked for Oh, it. you worked hard. Yeah. You know, long nights, long, a lot of studying, yeah, yeah. and you know, the rigors of that program are real. And I think, I, I think for any medical, right, when you're working with real human beings, you know, there's an emphasis on your skills and right. you the... And we what, have you need you to know, know. definitely <clears throat> toned things down <laughs> over the years. When She's a teddy bear now. <laughs> she is a teddy bear now. Because, you know, really, when, when, when I first started, yeah. I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. Right. I really didn't. I worked off of standards and guidelines. Right. And then after that, I worked with Arlene Garcia, right. you know, who retired. Got to give a shout out Ms. to Arlene. It's a big G. Yeah. Incredible. Yes. Last year. Um, yeah. And we just said, okay, well, what, you know, how do you think we should do this? Right. How should we get this outcome? Um, and there weren't a lot of resources back then. Uh, there were other programs and we did meet twice a year, but there really wasn't a lot of sharing that went on. Right. Now there's Facebook groups and Instagram groups. Right. And, Lots of networking. Um, right. Lots no, of networking, sure. people Lots, working but, together. But before yeah. we functioned really on our own. Wow. Um, and so we kind of just went with what we felt was best right. and then give it a shot see how they you know you have to wait till the licensure exam right. scores to find out in. right and you have to wait till you hear back from the clinics that are hiring your therapists and and what do they have to say and then you regroup right. and start again the next year wow. uh, and so it is a constant cycle of change and innovation and so things are definitely not the way they used to be i mean the, honestly the first couple of years we always joke with those graduates because we were cre I, you know arlene and i were creating yeah. little therapy like physical therapists not right. assistants right um, right we had them doing a lot of things that is a little bit beyond the scope of a pta right. and over the years we've kind of like okay that's not necessary right um, that's a good to know not a need to know right, right. yeah direct quotes right <laughs> no very true yeah. no that's so true we have we yeah. have tried to you know because students are like why does it have to be so hard and say like, well you know we're not trying to make it ridiculously difficult. Right. Um, we just know what you need yeah. to be successful. Right. And yeah. so we've got to figure out a way to get that out to you in mm -hmm. a 16-week module. Right. And then you take a little break, and then we'll come back. Right. Uh, and so, you know, one of our mottos is, you know, trust the process. Right. Yeah. what we tell students. Is right. And it depends. And it depends. Mm -hmm. And embrace the suck. Uh, yeah, everything's um, gray, right? Yeah. The big gray area. Yeah. And, right. You know, you're not done till you're done. <laughs> uh, all of those. And so we just try to get students to buy in. Right. You know, to buy into it and say, give us absolutely. Your, they got to drink the Kool Aid to a certain you. extent, right? You. Yeah. Right. You know, just give us your time, give yeah. us your energy, 
and let us do our work mm -hmm. and we will help you to become that therapist I, you want to be. I think I love that. You, everyone, you got to drink the Kool-Aid, right? You, you got to get in there. Because it is, it's kind of like, again, I'm going to refer to, right. you know, Popovich. Right. You have to drink the Kool-Aid. You, ha you have to be unselfish. You right. can't be all about you. And I think that that's what has helped the students, you know, that graduate, they become a family right. and they spend more time with each other yeah. than with their own actual families. Yeah. So I think that that mentality, if they all adopt it, they tend to do better as a class, as a cohort. Right. Yeah. Now I can tell you, you know, the, I think you hit it, the, the foundational excellence that you guys teach in this program from day one, where it's like being respectful to your peers and because that's the same attitude you're going to carry into the clinic or into your profession yeah, as you go out there and you're representing the, the program one yeah. but the profession right yeah. the profession as a student you're out absolutely, there representing the school yeah. and representing 26 years is that how long the program has been running no it's as long as i've been there, oh, okay the program's but, running uh, we graduated our first class in 2000 thanks so 22 years right so yeah. you know running 22 years of you know this standard yeah. so i think it's great you know yeah. um and the the way it's taught out there you know from the basic of ha washing your hands right just wash your hands I, we were just talking about it more and more i was like that is number one skill that they're going to have to learn yeah and most yeah. of them think that they know how to wash right. their hands but mm -hmm. you know when you do it procedurally it's different than so what you normally do let's talk about that because come uh 2016 2017 2018 2019 well covid yeah yeah and hand washing huge yeah big deal right and then you know Absolutely. working in the settings the hospitals or whatever it is i mean hand washing yeah. was the number one thing you could do right mm -hmm. at the very beginning goes without of this saying. whole thing that just combat on, on outside of you should be washing your hands whenever you're working with mm -hmm. you know clients yeah. or some some of that sort with people like that yeah. so um so i want to ask and i've always been curious and i said i got you guys here so i'm always i want to ask you know through the program as you know it is rigorous and you know n i don't know anybody and I'm not covering for anybody. I know nobody in my class who ever cheated, who ever tried to cheat or anything like that. But in yeah. your past experience, um, what does that look like? You know, have you been, have you ran across any students, you know, potentially trying to cheat um, if it's testing or through certain ways? Yeah. Um, and what, how, you know, what, what's that look like? What is, you know, how do you guys deal with that? Or how I do you this. even try to avoid that? Just a little bit. I don't know if I know this story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I've yeah. learned a lot right. <laughs> over the years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the worst case was a dismissal. Okay. Uh, the worst case was, and uh, they were actually turned in by another student. So it's treated like any, like then like on like a campus violation that goes to, like, is it board for reviews? and? Uh, back in that day, right. it wasn't a board for review. Wow, okay. It was, I was the board for <laughs> review. <laughs> and, uh, she said, you're gone, you're well, gone. Because, and that's it. Well, because of the item the items were there right they, they actually had notes right uh, written oh my gosh you know, tiny yeah. little notes and they were right there and so i think i contacted the dean and right. and we discussed it and they said well you have evidence i said yeah i got yeah. it wow so it was a dismissal that afternoon Son of a uh, that's probably the worst case mm -hmm. um i think that's the only true dismissal and then aside from that students are students mm -hmm. we know you yeah. know that you're stressed you're anxious you're desperate in some cases, right. and so sometimes students will resort to uh, behaviors and activities that they wouldn't normally do. Yeah. Right. Um, and so we, yeah. just kind of like a parent, you yeah. know, you, you, you try to create an environment where that's not an option. Yeah, right. nobody learns if you're cheating. 100%. I think maybe the worst that I can tell you that I've seen is maybe homework. Right. It's not really, you know, it's not be, gonna be very punitive if mm -hmm. they don't do well, but I keep telling them, if you take somebody else's homework answers, then you failed to learn that yep. information yeah. for mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. And so I think that they understand that. Right. I think, you know, we do have adult learners. I think they understand that if they don't do something, then that information isn't owned by them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to do it yourself to own the information. And I think initially, I think maybe they're maybe resistant to that. Right. But I think as they get through the program, they start to realize I have to do this myself or it's going to be of no use to me when I do that lab practical. Right. Because yeah. that's, yeah. you know, the culmination of putting the skills all together. Right. Putting like yeah. all your lecture right. book mm -hmm. stuff into the real world. Yeah, and then sure. as a department, though, we follow <laughs> safeguards. Yeah. Right. You know, we randomize our exams. We use different exams year to year. Right. <clears throat> um, when we're testing for lab practicals, it's 
Um, there's no cheating on a lab yeah. practical yeah, because it's no yeah. you yourself and you. Yeah, yeah there's no way. Scenarios, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they're not uh, in another room. Right. They're right with us. Right. Yeah. The students so. will not know what scenario they're going to get. And it's interesting because I've talked to other programs. They actually give the students the scenario the day before. Oh, wow. So because, but then they expect perfection. Right. They expect the student to know everything. So I don't know if that's any use. Right. I don't think I would, I think I'd rather just, you know, Here grab it is. Yeah, and just yeah. get mm -hmm. a scenario that I know the teacher's not going to expect for me to be perfect on versus getting a scenario and having to be perfect yeah. when I perform. Or you skill. get a little time to just really focus in, train on, you know, really hit those yeah. points. Because a lot of our profession is you're on your you're, toes. That's right. You know, you're on your toes because yes. things can change, people can change, and environments that's part of can the, change. Yeah, and that's part of why, yeah. you know, the design. is right. like everything is by design. And so we don't, we don't give you the information the day before right. and say, review this tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk in, you, you read your case for the day you get a few minutes to sit quietly right. and think it through mm -hmm. and then let's go because that's what clinic's all about mm -hmm. I, I like you say by design um, and I think that's what really makes your program much different by design the things you learn over the year so I want to kind of hit this topic too by design so yearly right or the PTA market here in the valley in the RGV um, would you say a lot of the students are from here how many do you get from out of town or out of you know, let's say San Antonio very North. Few, or, very it's few. Very okay. Maybe one a year. Okay. So for the most part, it's a lot of, it's the same community. Yeah. The Valley same, grown. Valley grown. Yeah. People coming to you guys. PTA program. So annually or on average, how many PTAs are you graduating uh, a year? Um, <laughs> the average is probably about 15. 15. A year. And how many start in the, in the start? 21. Okay. Most so, of the time it's 21. So you have about 21 possible grads. And then by the end of the program, which is a two year program. Yeah, then, 15 about on average yeah, the yeah. largest class we've ever graduated was 19 out of the 21 and the smallest class was not out of 21 the smallest class was out of 14 back in the day and it was six wow okay yeah so i i I'm, i want to ask you as the program chair i'm sure you do this by design right so what Absolutely. was what's really the purpose what what's that why you don't why not take a hundred students yeah. and graduate right. 70 or 50. yeah because we uh we do we're very intentional about keeping uh, an eye on the market mm -hmm. and monitoring where our students, where our graduates are going. How quickly are they getting hired? Are they getting uh, part-time positions that they have to work for jobs? Or are they getting full-time positions? Mm -hmm. um, and so we try to keep an eye on that every year, not necessarily formally, but mm -hmm. informally because we communicate you know, ongoing with our clinics, um, and it, and we're comfortable with 15. Right. We're just, we know that that will not saturate the local market, right. that we see that students are not having to travel to San Antonio and Houston to try to find a job. Right. Um, they're able to find a job near home in most cases, and so they're placed anywhere or they're getting jobs anywhere between Rio Grande City and Brownsville. Right. You know, we've got, you know, kind of access to the whole valley, and um, and we still have excellent support mm -hmm. from our clinics, yeah. um, so that also shows us that if they're willing to continue to support our program, then they're on board with we haven't saturated the market and we're not doing anything to jeopardize that. Right. Uh, this isn't like some of the other professions, like nursing, for example, right. that run twenty-four hour shifts. You know, so they're twelve hours on, and then the next twelve hour shift starts. Mm -hmm. Physical therapy, it's a uh, you know eight to 10 hour shift and you go home. Right. Yeah. Um, and so there are so many, there are only so many jobs out there. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there are new clinics opening all the time. Yes, there are people retiring and, and you know, going into other professions, but we've been fortunate all of these years that um, there's this ebb and flow. Right. You know, right. people out of the profession and then our graduates into yeah. that profession. You cycle and in as many as you cycle out. Yeah. Right. And this is by design, right? Absolutely. So we don't oversaturate the Absolutely. market. Absolutely. Jobs are available. Graduates have the opportunities to get these jobs yeah. and it keeps a good That's equilibrium yeah, in the community. Um, so for a long time, SEC has been the only PTA program here locally. I know there are a few more popping up. Uh, there's, I know UTR, UTRGV is now with their DPT yes. program. So now, we'll, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll be all done. And so there'll be uh, more PT, DPT graduates. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple more PTA schools one. or, okay, one, one more that's going to be opening. Is it this year? Do you guys know this year? I believe year? it is this year. Okay. I believe they just received, I think, mm -hmm. their initial accreditation. Right. So now we're looking at a little more. 
Mm-hmm. graduates mm-hmm. into the markets right yeah. and you know with the same jobs that would be available mm-hmm. yeah. and so do you foresee or you know how do you foresee this affecting your program forward like what do you think it's difficult to say yeah mm-hmm. um i think that the interest will still be there because we do take such a small cohort mm-hmm. you know 21 i think we're this year we did 22, 22. Mm-hmm. so considered the number of students in the valley right. you know i think uh that the market will still be there as far as student interest um and then we will have to wait and see what it looks like for graduate right. placement i don't anticipate that it's going to be terrible right um but th- it will definitely have an impact right. you know because you're going to take our 15 and you're essentially going to triple it right you know they'll i don't know how many dpts will be graduating um, I believe the, the other PTA program is going to take a class of 16 is what I understand. Nice. So then again, you know, I don't know if they're going to lose some students along the way mm-hmm. or how many will graduate, but it sounds like you know, they'll be graduating similar to, to what we were. Right. So, so anyone who would be interested in the PTA program um, who are out there, where can they find, how can they get a hold of you guys? Um, who's their contact, main contact? Like, what does that look like if yeah. someone's interested in getting to the program? Off of our main webpage, um, you can... For SDC's main web page, you mm-hmm. can just put in PTA program, and that'll get you to our website. And there's um, a great picture of you here, Diana. Is there? Yes, sir. So you got <laughs> contact physical therapist is in program, and then there's this great picture. Okay. Uh, so it's <clears throat> I'm looking at it, and it's you know South Texas College, and but there's a PTA program, a mm-hmm. tab. Yep. Um, so I guess the contact here it looks like it would be Diana Aguilera. Diana, Diana your <clears throat> faculty. She's uh, our faculty secretary. secretary. Um, and then Mari Ponce Vargas is our student success specialist. She manages uh, several programs, including PTA. Uh, and so she does the one-on-one with potential candidates and makes sure that they're on the right track. And then we're fortunate that she then continues working with our graduates or with our students until they graduate. Awesome. Yeah. So it's a, it's a nice relationship that they can build with somebody there at the college. Real face-to-face time. That's and right. she's super helpful. I can tell you, man, yeah, she's, she's so helpful. Yeah, she's the brains of the operation. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. she's super, super helpful. Mm-hmm. Now she advises uh, them, make sure that they have all the classes that they need, kind of reminds them that they need to take their HESI. Then she enrolls them into the intro to physical therapy, which is typically that last prerequisite course that they need to take and these are offered online are they just in person um, now what we, has we're not really evolving doing a yeah. lot of online okay. general prerequisites can still be online okay but the intro to physical therapy and the pt program courses are all face to face and we tried the online yeah that was a challenge yeah. i would i you know i would i would think um through covid right so yeah, you have these classes to. coming through yeah. but you know that kind of works and i can tell you why because in the field when it came when that started happening in the community well, everyone still needed to work and everyone still needed. So it became Zoom sessions yes. for a lot of PT. Yeah. And I, I, I know talking to a couple fellow colleagues that it was sometimes uncomfortable or not so used to, but I can imagine in school being exposed to it, doing the lab practical via Zoom. Uh, the challenge in grading, I could imagine, right? The challenge in grading, I could imagine, but just to go to that process, you know, to set it up, some places do that already and some places were. Um, but you can see it kind of evolving there now and now that it's reimbursed now, right? So now a lot of people now, these clinics and home health are now doing that a little more, sending out the iPad, giving it to the family, keeping them on, having the, the, and the so therapist come in. And so we definitely, we use technology at a completely different level than yeah. we did three years ago. Yeah. Um, but students, you know, student surveys, it's straight up. We much prefer yeah. to be here. In the class. students didn't like it. Yeah. yeah. The students wanted to be in the class. I could imagine, yeah. Yeah, because difficult. you don't get that same level of hands-on experience. Yeah. Yeah. You have to put your hands on the person to feel, to, to know what the joint is doing, right. to really be able to feel, palpate. I mean, right. all of those things are invaluable to a physical yeah, therapist, yeah. a physical therapist assistant. You can't become a good clinician if you don't put your hands on someone. Right. So yeah. Ms. H always tells them, your $50,000 hands or $15,000 <laughs> hands, whatever it is. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you have to put your hands on the patient right. and that patient needs to know that your touch is going to be healing, that it's right. going to be helpful. Right. If you, you know, if you're not confident in what you're doing, then that is going to be conveyed through yeah. the touch. Awesome. So, so yeah, they'll be ready to do, you know, online treatment as needed because we're definitely incorporating pieces into the curriculum. But um, if we are allowed to be on campus, we will be on campus. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So the um, the working hours. I mean, anyone who's interested in getting, they can contact uh, Ms. Aguilar, and then they'll set up their 
um, yeah, their one to one or their mm -hmm. initial interview, and then kind of take it from there. Right. Okay. Right. And then if they get into the curriculum, then it's a full time daytime program. So classes typically start by eight or eight thirty, and we're in house until five or five thirty. Um, many of our students, as you know, stay after mm -hmm. hours and they yeah. work collaboratively because they have access to our equipment and supplies that they wouldn't have at home. Um, and occasionally there's a Saturday lab that will open up. And again, it's you know usually for the benefit of the student, not because we're teaching new skills, but they want to get in there. Right. Um, so we have Practice. lab assistants that help out with that. Um, so so it is a, it's a heavy commitment in time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's only two years. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's a quick two years. No, it, it flies it, by. It does fly by. That first year is a little, man. You know, that, that, that first one seems, but it seems you get to that second year and the second one seems to fly a yeah. little quicker. I, that was just my right, personal because experience. Because you've changed as right. a student. You're yeah, a different sure. person. No, for sure. Right. Then just the knowledge base, I think, alone. Uh -huh. And you understand the processes right. and the practicals and your schedule. Yep. It's very demanding. And you start to kind of yeah. kind of learn to there. Yeah. And you've gone to the clinic by then. Oh, yeah. So you know what you're working for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best part. Mm -hmm. Like you already know what it's going to be like when you get into the clinic. Right. So you're, you know, you're hungry for more information. That's right. right. That's right. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, I want to say thank you guys for coming on and, you know, this morning. Yeah. And the weather was good. Um, so thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. And, you know, we can, I appreciate you guys coming in. We can talk about the program, let the community know what we got going on here. And, you know, I want to just thank you guys again. I wish you the best of luck. And, thank you. You know, and keep doing what there. you're doing. We're yeah, we, no, yes. yeah, we're trying. Yeah, you know, we're trying. So anyway, well, thank you guys very much. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sounds good.